scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. He said, if I by the finger of God do this, the anointing. Please pray in one minute where you are and say, Lord, let it come like the dew of heaven upon my life. The anointing. I don't know how else to teach you this. You must desire the anointing. The anointing will bring favor to your life. I'm telling you, in one day, it will open doors of prosperity you never imagined. You don't need to know nobody, I'm telling you. The anointing can bring peace to that family. It can bring peace. The anointing can bring peace. Hallelujah. Listen, there are many of us, we have been able to take steps from the teachings that have been coming here but for many of us the missing ingredient is that anointing Samson with the anointing did mighty things when when what's the name of that lady when Delilah came Delilah was attacking the all she was concerned about was the anointing are you getting my point Delilah had no business whether Samson was strong no 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 she said, what is the source of your strength? Tell me. That's all I want to know. Not when are you going to marry me. Not when will you take me to Chicken Republic. I want to know. How come you are a man who is so slim, yet you remove gates, yet you use jaw bones to do mighty things? What is the secret? And Samson kept it. The anointing was hidden in his hair. Right? according to the prophecy that was given there was a spiritual code that governed the operation of the anointing and he was told to protect it as a nazarene he would not cut his hair the spirit of the antichrist walked in delilah to keep luring him and samson said do this and that and she cried and said samson all she was after was the anointing that's why the devil is called antichrist the one who fights the anointing He fights the anointing. He uses all kinds of things to fight the anointing. Blackmails to fight the anointing. Your past failures. All he's attacking is the anointing. Because when you lose the anointing, you've lost it. And she shaved the head of Samson. Samson, the Philistines are after you. He got up. They didn't tear any part of his body but the anointing left and he was as weak as any ordinary man and then they removed his eyes immediately and samson began to be a slave the only thing that came back to samson's life was the anointing when they went and samson stood and began to ask god for mercy they kept samson the anointing was being mocked by a dragon a god and they said you who has troubled the Philistines but Samson said oh Lord and while 
in minutes the hair began to grow they didn't know they didn't notice it they were dancing and when the hair came suddenly the anointing came brothers and sisters when the anointing is on your life the result is instant 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 the day you start preaching with the anointing everybody will know you don't need to tell everybody call me pastor they will call you ministers of our god when they see the anointing you don't need to tell anybody i'm a, I'm a great businessman let the anointing come the anointing please pray in one minute just do what i'm telling you to do say lord i need the anointing in my life i need the anointing in my life for those of us who have seen a measure or so of the anointing say lord increase my boundaries in the spirit <laughs> stretch the boundaries so god in the spirit activate new possibilities in my life by the agency of the anointing let me lead by the anointing let me write that jam by the anointing let me write that wayek by the anointing let me write the exam by the anointing let me do my office activities by the anointing let me preach let me run this ministry by the anointing hallelujah hallelujah please sit down we have just about an hour or so and then we're done let me see how we can just touch whatever we can touch we're supposed to start a new series tonight and um, there is a special teaching on the anointing I already sense that there are fountains that in the days to come we are going to touch in the spirit hallelujah so all of the teachings have been preparations towards it and um, I hope we will be able to touch it we'll just do a two part series I think we'll just reduce it to a two part series and touch whatever we we'll touch then eventually we'll continue maybe by next month hallelujah oh I love the Lord We are taking a series called the emergence the emergence it's a series that seek to reveal to us God's prophetic operation in the nations and in the continent of Africa right now in this series we're going to be exploring what God is currently doing now we will unveil the plot of darkness that looms upon the nation there are all kinds of terrorist groups arising right rebellion across the states what what is happening these things are prophetic writings on the wall and we need to understand and begin to see these things from the lens of prophecy the emergence so the first part of it is going to be talking about the prophecy the prophecy that is upon God's people, the prophecy that is upon our nation, the prophecy that is upon the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in this end time. And then I will also be touching on the making of reformers, is the part one. That's what we'll be doing today. I will show you the spiritual system with which God makes men, how men are made in the spirit. How an ordinary man can become a man of power and stature in the spirit. Hallelujah. Then the next part of the series will be talking about the strategy. The ecclesia of God. God's strategy for this coming apostolic invasion. The Bible says, nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And so we need to be prepared how to align ourselves <sighs> thank you Jesus
God has always had a system. There has been a prophecy. Listen to me, please. I want you to know that we are in the middle of prophecy. We are in the middle of history. Hallelujah. The signs that the Bible begins to give that will happen are already happening. Look at what is happening in America. Look at what is happening in the Middle East. Down the Sub-Saharan Africa. Nigeria. Darkness looms across the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. The pride of kings are being humbled in these seasons. Economies are melting down. Several things are happening across the territories of the nations. And God did not leave us in the dark. Hallelujah. He said, for behold, darkness covers the earth. And gross darkness, the people. That was a reality that would happen at a particular point in history. And this is that time when darkness is covering the earth. There are all kinds of perversions. Right? The speakings of the beast. The Antichrist, both as a system and as an entity. I had a lot to talk about tonight, but I hope that the emergence, the occultic societies, the Freemasons, the Illuminatis, these fraternities that are a symbol of rebellion, they have marked their presence across the entire strata of human activities, from the economy to the media to music. Watch this, please. But in this last day, because the system of the Antichrist also has its mode of operation. Are you getting my point now? The system of the Antichrist is the system that will usher in the presence of that figure. Not just a, as a system. And listen to me. There is a secret rebuilding of the Tower of Babel going on in the nations right now. Genesis 11 begins to tell us that a man under the influence of the spirit of the Antichrist called Nimrod, the son of Cush, he began to mobilize men to build a city that did not honor God. That city is being rebuilt again. Hallelujah. The governmental policies that are being put, the ideologies according to Revelation 13 and when you read so on and so forth the speakings of the beast remember what John saw John said he saw a lamb with horns and he was about to bow to that lamb remember and about to bow when the lamb spoke he saw a lamb but he had the voice of a dragon and immediately he said this is not the lamb that was what John saw right a mixing of the truth looks like the lamb talk like the lamb or acted like the lamb but his mouth began to betray and when john listened he said uh -uh, because my sheep hear my voice and he said this is not the voice of the lamb this is the voice of a dragon so there is a secret rebuilding of the tower of babel this this antichrist system you've heard a lot about the illuminati and their agenda and we all laugh and just think it's a figment of imagination. But let me tell you something. It is, it is the strategy of the devil masquerading itself in secrecy. But in these days, there is an open show of darkness. It's no longer a hidden thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It used to be a secret fraternity of the elite. And so occasionally by divination, they see through the vistas of time. And they handpick potential people across music across the arts and entertainment across business and so they come to you with a proposal to manipulate things according to their will you become a benefactor when you sell your soul to the devil mystery babylon the ancient secret of initiation that brings men into fraternity with a system that is godless hallelujah and it is all the composition of the systems. And so they went on with every kind of demonic manipulation. Let me tell you something. I've said it again and again. I have an apostolic call. I'm not a pastor. And so I'm not one of those who will sugarcoat a lot of things. No, no. Listen. I tell you the truth. Aside from the war between Israel and the world. 
every war that is happening in this earth is a big drama theater and performing arts that's what is going on a secret manipulation of darkness please are you hearing what i'm saying i told you that the owner of i think it was mtv was asked and he said how come you have so much influence on the little children i think of ages 8 to 16 or thereabout and he laughed he said we don't influence them we own them we have developed a structure already that grows with them right and so they have invaded everything most of these organizations you celebrate are all fraternities of darkness they have signed their allegiance let me tell you satan is called the god of this world have you been told is it not in your bible the bible says he took jesus to a mountain and showed him the glories of this world and said if you bow that's the only condition bow means sell your soul bow means prove that you are not equal with god and i will give you and watch this i began to explore especially the music industry very intricately i don't know why the attention of darkness has moved very closely to music right the highest advocates of the illuminati are businessmen and musicians right please listen to me very important i'm showing you the structure we're going to talk about the emergence i hope is the I'm, I'm talking about the prophecy now darkness the word darkness there does not necessarily just mean like absence of light sunlight a system and remember the bible calls certain classes of spirits rulers of darkness that means their dominion is magnified when there is no light they are not called rulers of light rulers of darkness and so they have controlled the economy of nations they have controlled everything almost all the music artists that have been killed right all of those people you you used to know are people who at one point or the other started violating their allegiance because they looked and they found out that this is a system of injustice a system of darkness and any attempt to revolt will cost you your life please listen to me i have seen many things i'm not one of those who stands on stage and begins to prophesy national and all of that but let me tell you on the strength of my secret place the lord has shown me many things and one of the things that will begin to happen upon the nations of the earth is an open show of evil it's it they they have masqueraded it until they built sufficient structures now they are removing the mask and saying we are the ones make no confusion about it we are the ones that control your economy we are the ones that control your educational system we are the ones that control what your children watch we can manipulate technology i thought we would have time today i would have shown you a few documentaries that will shock you maybe next week we'll do that right and you will be shocked to see the extent to which this antichrist system is already building the system of babylon taking anything that looks like god out there are two things that are of concern to me number one is what we call the demonic doctrine of universalism let me explain to you what that means look up please the teaching that every religion is an aspect of god are you hearing what i'm saying that is just different sides of seeing the same thing have you been taught that so there are all kinds of christian sects especially occultic sects branching out pseudo christian sects and they have one mission to be able to market this doctrine of in quote love and universalism that means it doesn't matter there are different ways to get to god rather than criticizing me find my similarity with you so that we become friends are you seeing that now it is the same spirit of acts chapter 16 when a lady who was with the spirit of divination when paul entered the city what happened she started looking for the areas of similarity 
is fivefold. I am fivefold. He said, These are mighty men. Why? So that if Paul preaches for three days or one week and goes out, people will say, You are the friend of Paul. So we will listen to you. A system of darkness. Eating people up. I've said it again and again. I, I, I pray so much, especially for our little children who are growing because the system was well designed. This is not something that started 10 years ago, 20 years, 100 years. No. It's a strategy by the devil. Right? They worked with demons to manufacture AIDS. They worked with demons to manufacture cancer. They worked with demons to bring Ebola. They are, they are a deceitful people. They claim they love Africa. They claim they love the nations. They have sold their souls to the devil. There is no iota of love in them. They stand and tell lies because they own the televisions that give the news. They own the papers that bring the news. Are you ready for tonight's teaching? Hmm. And right now, there is no hiding again. They are already beginning to come one by one. Opening up the fact that the fraternity of darkness they are involved with is the source of their strength. They have acquired all the money. They have acquired all the fame and everything. And they are now manipulating people. But the, another point, I told you that the point of concern is this music. Why, why is the attention of darkness so much on music? I will tell you why. I began to find out that it was an ancient mystery. That every time it was time to bow to a king or a deity, music will precede that homage please are you hearing what i'm saying this is a this is i pray that you get what i'm saying it was the custom of kings in ancient times they would stand upon the pinnacle of their temples and so they will now say all hail the king and there will be shofars that will be blown right and at the sounding of that shofar the entire nation will bow if it was a graven image they would do the same thing was that not what happened in the days of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? You remember? They told them that music will be played. The moment you hear that music, know that it is now time. What follows that is a bowing. And that's the same thing that is happening. So the devil is already using the weapon of music to force men to bow to this God of gold. That stature called the Antichrist. Let me tell you something. I'm already seeing the formation of the government of the Antichrist upon the earth. It's not something that will happen in one day or 10 years or 20 years, but it is a formation. There is already a formation of that godless system. And if the church of the Lord Jesus Christ does not arise to sustain the strategy from the spirit, to be able to raise a standard, then very soon we are going to be victims. So there is an emergence. Because the Bible told us the moment you see darkness covering the earth, at the same time, coincidentally, the army is rising. See that? So it's a teaching that prepares us, revealing to us that every day brings us into the reality of prophecy. Every day. Everything that happens across the nation is right now prophetic. Politicians understand right now that they are in the middle of prophecy individuals understand right now that they are in the middle of prophecy did you know that koinonia you're coming here they are all interwoven in the prophecies of this book we may never know you may not find a place in this book written joshua selman or your name but it is all part of the prophetic agenda of god whether you believe it or not jesus is coming soon let me repeat myself. Whether you believe it or not, I'm announcing to you that Jesus is coming soon. Gullible preachers prefer talking about money than that, but I am telling you, Jesus is coming soon. Say amen. He's coming soon. But before he's coming, he gave us an assurance that there will be a global awakening. There will be an arising and imagine a clash of kingdoms. So there is a prophecy that is upon the world 
that the knowledge of evil, the rage of evil will increase. The fierceness of wickedness will begin to multiply because the spirits that have been kept until this season, as they are released from the pit of darkness, they come with fierce anger. The Bible says Satan has fallen upon the earth with great fury because he knows his time is short. There, is, there are unleashings of arsenals of darkness and the church and the anointing is the target. So marriages right now are under attack. Right? Marriage is under attack. All kinds of things happening. The devil is coming with all sorts of strategies and gimmicks. But there is a generation that will call him a liar. And we are that generation in the name of Jesus Christ. But at the same time, there is a prophecy upon us. Over there, 121, we read it. That saviors will arise out of Zion the city the place of God the place where they have been built and trained and prepared saviors shall arise and he said they will judge the mount of Esau that rebellious entity that system the antichrist system is called many things in the bible Jezebel the dragon Babylon Egypt they are all an expression of one and the same government Running from Genesis to Revelation. That city of rebellion. Hallelujah. But it's not enough for the church to know that there is a prophecy upon us. That we have a prophetic destiny. We must understand that there is a system with which God will build and make men. And around three. One great woman that uh, I've, I've read a bit of her her you know her books and her encounters with Jesus Christ she began to talk about the coming revival I read a lot about revivals both past and present and the revivals to come I began to read about how she said that Jesus appeared unto her she had encounters with Jesus for like a year true genuine encounters and in that encounter he began to reveal to her about the coming revival and she was granted access to see the dealings and the preparations of the spirit and the way the inhabitants of the earth the church the ecclesia god's system of victory will be built and equipped hallelujah so there is a prophecy upon us say there is a prophecy upon my life say one more time there is a prophecy upon my life you must believe that you are not ordinary listen you're coming to koinonia whether you are inside or outside everything that is happening is leading you towards prophecy it may not look like it you came for koinonia with pains you came to zaria maybe as a student or you came to zaria maybe to serve or you came to zaria because you got a job or marriage brought you you in the midst of all of these confusions i want you to know that there is a line of prophecy there is something happening in your life that is bringing you towards prophecy praise the lord and it's important for us to know that but then how does god make men because it's not enough to just know that there are there are reformers and revival is the making of reformers what is the spiritual process this will explain to some of us the happenings in our lives right now and it will help and encourage us to stay true as God is working on us. Hallelujah. When the Lord began to show me this, my eyes were opened and I said, my goodness, can you imagine? First Peter chapter 4 verse 12, please. Are you there? Everyone read is projected. One to read. Beloved, think it not what? Hold on. That means don't think it is a surprise to you. Don't, don't act as though it were something strange. He said, think it not strange concerning the what? Fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. That's what the Bible is saying. I'm showing you the process. The mystery of the furnace of affliction. That furnace with which God makes men mighty. Please listen to me. God is ministering to us right now. 
There is no making of a champion without a process that will require pain, discipline, pruning, and alignment. Please don't forget this. There is no champion. I said it, I think it was last week or the week before last. Nobody wins the Olympic by mistake. No man of God just happens to be anointed by mistake. There's no such thing as that. No one just carries the glory of God by mistake. I want you to know that there is a spiritual pathway to accessing true power, to accessing relevance and strength in the spirit. To be a steward of God's finances, to be a steward of God's glory, to be a steward of God's grace. Very important. And one of that mystery is the mystery of the fullness of affliction. You may not like what it, this is, but I want you to listen to me very carefully. The fullness of affliction. It was Job that began to speak to us. And he began to communicate his, the tragedy that came upon his life. Hallelujah. It was Paul that began to speak to us about a thorn in his flesh. It was Moses and all of these people, Joseph, that went through certain things. Listen to me, please. Tonight, I want to change your understanding and your interpretation of affliction and trials. Now, I know that I've done a teaching on that. I think spiritual timings are there about. You can listen to it. There are certain things that happen to men that are orchestrated by darkness. I personally do not believe that God willingly takes evil or darkness or trials or this and puts upon people. However, I believe that according to the system of his wisdom and sovereignty, he is able to take advantage of situations in our lives and orchestrate that through them, they are used as schoolmasters to prune and bring us to a point of stature and strength and relevance and usefulness in the spirit. I believe that. Absolutely. I don't know how many other people got their anointing and their grace. But let me tell you, there is no spiritual champion. There is no principality in the kingdom that did not go through the mystery of the fullness of affliction. You must understand this. You don't have to pray against it. There's nothing to bind there. Are you getting my point? The only thing that happens for you or happens in your life at that point is grace, the sustaining power of the spirit to go through it and finish well. Isaiah 43 verse 1 and 2 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. He said, I have called you by name, you are mine. He said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. He said, through the river, it shall not overwhelm you. But he said, when you walk through the fire, not run through it. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. When you walk through the fire, listen to me. It's very important. The way they make the anointing in Israel, they still do that. I have, I have, I have anointing oil straight from Israel with, with mar, spikenard, and all of these things that were used. Ancient ingredients, the, the, the spices that were originally used. It smells the exact requirement, the ingredients God gave. I have, I have a um, a bottle of, of, of anointing oil like that and every time I just put a little of that on my hand I keep looking at it and the fragrance is nice, the smell but then I studied a bit on how they make that olive they have what they call a crushing stone, right? and they take that olive and they pour it there and they put a heavy stone upon it and they start turning round and it puts pressure and it begins to crush that olive. And as it crushes the olive, it begins to squeeze out the oil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is that way that God will make you become a man of true power. Afflictions are not there to kill us. The fullness of affliction reveals the spiritual system that brings us to the point of obedience. Jesus said he learned obedience by the things he suffered he learned it it was not an impartation he learned obedience there were orchestrations in his life that compelled him to walk in obedience you will not align yourself to spiritual things just by default 
there is an operation of the spirit there are happenings and orchestrations around your life that are aimed at bringing you to a point where you begin to see from god's perspective and if you do not know that this is a pathway to carrying grace you will run and allow the devil mock god in your presence say after me god forbid hallelujah the first thing i want you to know about challenges that is that number one affliction and trials are not necessarily an indication of lack of faith let me deliver somebody right away there are many of us who are going through all kinds of situations right now from finance to your health to maybe marriage to whatever it is and we have been made to think that the entire reason why everything is happening to us is because of lack of faith let me tell you something i have learned by experience especially for students it's not every student who is suffering in class that is as a result of childlessness or laziness it's easy to conclude that people and look at them and say your cgp is on one point something you know it's a terrible thing you are an embarrassment to redemption however it may not be everybody but let me tell you there are a few people that they, there is a strange pathway in the spirit that they are taking that is taking them to where they themselves do not know just follow me there are many families that may not understand why in spite of their righteousness and their love for god they are tithing and giving and they are committed to spiritual things it looks like there are certain orchestrations that just seem to draw them back it's like a a cycle of woes and pain i'm telling you this that there are dimensions of the dealings of the spirit that are not demonic it is called the mystery of the fullness of affliction this, this teaching is not for babes. It's not just receive, receive. It, because I'm explaining to some of you the mystery behind what is happening in your life. In spite of your prayer, you hear God about everything but not that situation. And God looks silent. Lord, what is all this? And it looks like you receive a prophetic word for others but for you you have fasted for one week at the end of the prayer all the scriptures you had were about comfort i want you to know that there is a school you are passing through and what you are receiving is a lecture pay attention hallelujah moses did not know why he ran away and for 40 years there were certain processes he was going through he did not understand until the god of israel called him and told him that he there was a prophecy upon his life prophecies do not just manifest just because you love god there is a pathway it may not be for everybody but everyone who truly wants to be used by god goes through this pathway the fullness of affliction like a blacksmith right that melts metals to remove their impurities and now begins to carve them there are several um expressions in the bible that are used to describe this process the potter and the clay the blacksmith there are all kinds of processes the bible begins to tell us about the potter and the clay how that he picks up the clay smashes it right and now begins to mold it into fashion The fullness of affliction is a is a pathway in the spirit is the root that leads you to galatians 2 20 that realm called i have been crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me and this life that i live in the flesh that is the body i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for you come to a point where you have no life in your own. Your ego is stung until there is nothing to sting it again. There are all kinds of things that happen to you. I want you to know that there are people sitting right now, right here, that are going through that pathway in the spirit. You prayed and you said, God, use me. Anoint me and make me mighty. And God said, Amen to that prayer. You just did not know that what is happening to you is amen to your prayer. Lord, make me that multi-billionaire businessman. I will advocate for the kingdom. And God said, amen. It's just that we have not been taught how God answers our prayers. 
we have only been taught that result is the only proof that God has answered your prayer. But let me tell you, when you begin to mature in the things of the Spirit, the fullness of affliction can be an answer to your greatest prayer. Is God speaking to us? So number one, afflictions and trials are not necessarily an indication of lack of faith. Please look at me. Many of you have been fasting and have been saying, Lord, I don't have faith. I don't have faith. We taught on faith, I think it was last week or, or week after last. Many of us have been taught, if you pray about something and it does not happen, you never had faith. If you had faith, it would have happened. Let me tell you, I honor and I respect those teachings, but it depends on the dimension you are standing in the spirit for you to be able to say some things. Are you getting what I'm saying? Not every affliction is as a result of lack of faith. There are men who you are going through the fire right now because you have faith. That's the reason why you are going through it. I feel God is ministering to people. Hallelujah. You stand on that board and you see what you did not want to see. And tears rolling down your eyes, you say, Lord, you are faithful. And other people look at you and say, when will you stop your laziness? There's no need trying to explain to them. It's a pathway you don't go in group. You go alone. It's a lonely road. No matter how men love you, when you get to the end of that road, they must leave you. You can be in a relationship with your darling and sweetheart. You will part ways. Are you getting one? The fullness of affliction is customized with your name on it. Nobody can help you to take the fire out of love. You know that thing they used to say, Mba Keba Serija. No way. It doesn't work when you are passing through the fullness of affliction. You pass alone. Please listen to me. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Number two, your tears and expressions of pain do not necessarily reflect unbelief. Your tears and your expressions of pain and do not necessarily reflect unbelief. You must learn this. There are so many people who have been stopped from crying in the church. Why are you crying? Rejoice. Look, let me tell you. It's not every seed you sow crying. There is he that weepeth hearing precious seeds it's not everything in life that happens with joy please are you hearing what i'm saying don't let any man fool you there are things that will happen in your life no matter how anointed you are it will bring tears out of your eyes tears and expressions of pain are not a sign of unbelief learn this and jesus wept the bible didn't say and he wept he mentioned the name of the person who cried and your Jesus wept. It's alright to cry and express pain. You get to a point in your life where it overwhelms you. There are times that lack of finances will eat you up. And you stand and you are seeing I can follow one allergy somewhere and be blessed. But I love God and I stay. But the truth is, the reality at the moment is that there is no food. It's not like somebody is bringing food in the evening. There's nobody that is sending you money anywhere. The fullness of affliction. The place where mighty men are made. That's, that's where reformers emerge. For David, it was the cave of Adullam. He ran and he stayed there. On asylum, he ran away. Ran away from civilization. And he hid there. It was the place where he was made. The wilderness was one place where he was made again. You see it all through scriptures. That men were separated in unpleasant places. Read your Bible and see prophets who God made to sleep on one side of the bed. Have you read that? Read of prophets that God made to mix animal dung. Read of prophets who were made to marry prostitutes. After suffering to keep themselves for decades, God said, the nature of my dealing with you will necessitate you marrying a prostitute. So long. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know that many of you may not appreciate this teaching. But this is the kind of teaching that will make you powerful. Hallelujah. 
mysteriously at a point in my life i've shared my story when i was diagnosed with a fungal infection i prayed every prayer i know how to pray let me tell you if you say i didn't have faith you are joking i had the the whole faith in the world they took me from hospital to hospital to hospital to hospital took samples of my head i became an object of experiment in that darkness i began to feel the pain of what it means to have an seemingly it was they couldn't find out what was wrong that's the painful part i've shared with you the story my mom has been here when she had to use iron sponge what you use to scrub the back of your pot huh? that's what was used on my head it's called the furnace of affliction that's why when some people come out of that furnace nothing moves them again you just shout and they are looking at you after i went see look let me a sign let me tell you a proof that you are passing through that what made you cry yesterday makes you laugh today you think about it somebody just says are you going to sleep with me as before for the money and you laugh they carry your money and go and they say there's no food and you say lord i give you glory you sit down in the midst of fire and you lie down and sleep you and the fire have become one the bible says you walk through it are you hearing what i'm saying a time comes in the furnace of affliction where all your fears happen to you and there is nothing to fear again the fear of lack of membership happened the fear of lack of money happened the fear of the carryover happened at the end of it when you say god you are faithful there is no strings attached you suspected the relationship would break yes it broke but in all you have learned to be strong look let me tell you that that's the secret of courage you see some men go as if the devil even the devil doesn't know how to disturb them again because he doesn't know which part of their life he will touch satan satan is not a fool i've taught you this he will touch your finances and see your reaction if you do audition he won't touch it again because it means it doesn't matter to you then he will touch your health there is an aspect of your life you will touch the way you will react the devil will sing praise and worship and dance around and say i found it i found it for many of us every party touches you shout and so god says no you are a babe you may be the president of your ministry but that furnace of affliction touches every area of your life until you become dead a dead man doesn't have feelings again so they just call you and say mr man your car had a ghastly motor accident and you laugh you say please can i can we continue what we are discussing and people say it's like you didn't hear me your 2.5 million car just crashed you say lord i give you praise let's continue the fullness of affliction has done something to you you are not a pure human being again something spiritual has altered your humanity it has made you strong are you hearing what i'm saying absolutely this is the kind of fullness of affliction that can make women to carry their dead children they say madam your child just died and they look and tears are coming out of their eyes and they are saying lord you are faithful when is the burial date and you are saying what sort of insensitive person no 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 the opposite of what i'm telling you is excessive emotionalism and that's what the, the system of darkness is doing so people send every picture on facebook and twitter you are angry you you snap yourself and say i'm angry and then five minutes later you eat and say now yam has come you see that that bad attitude is as a result of lack of the fullness of affliction there is a way you are built they look at you and they say after next week they are coming to pack up your ministry and you laugh say, my god is faithful you become unperturbed you are not touched by anything may god take us to that realm if you don't get to that realm worry alone will kill you are you hearing what i'm saying if you do not get to that realm i guarantee you worry will kill you have you seen men who just sit down on their veranda and die have you seen people like that they just sit down bring me a stool and they sit down and die a man will go to a mango tree and 
put rope by himself. Right? And put the rope from under up and hang himself. Ready? Go and lift the rope and hang himself on a tree. The fullness of affliction makes you a spiritual man. Please hear me. It makes you a true spiritual man. If you have never cried, you have not gone through the furnace of affliction. I guarantee you, you have been passing through AC and the rest. The furnace of affliction will bring tears in your eyes. You will sit down one day and the whole world will change. You, you will not find value in anything. One day you will sit down and you will look at your lecturer. As he's teaching, you are thinking as if you are 70 years old. You are just thinking about life. When that happens to you, you are going through a fullness of affliction. You sit down in the office and they even call your name and you cannot answer again. Not because you are depressed, you are thinking about life. You come to a point where nothing else makes meaning to you except His Majesty. Is God speaking to us? As a man of God, you come to a point where five months, nobody, you are praying and fasting and it's during that time, no invitation no honorarium right at that time you come to your fellowship and you find three people your sister your uncle the other guy who is coming to beg you those are the three people that are around yet you are making tremendous progress in the spirit and you do not understand the fullness of affliction you stand to preach the generator spoils everything scatters your ego has been stung. On top of that, you pray for somebody who is sick and the person doesn't get healed. And they say, Pastor, I, this thing you are teaching us, we are not getting it. You come to a point where you just play songs, you play hymns and you just sit down. Everything. Remember all those country music. This world is not my home. You just sit down. People say, why? I, I mean, life doesn't make sense. Hear me. Don't just laugh. It's the fullness of affliction. Don't think it's happening because of lack of faith. If no one has taught you, rejoice when you are going through those things. Because sooner or later, it's a proof that you must arrive somewhere. Your tears and expressions of pain do not necessarily reflect unbelief. God taught me this. God taught me. I didn't read it in any book. God himself taught me that the fullness of affliction is the school of is part of the curriculum in the school of the spirit. No matter how anointed you are, I give you a guarantee under the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you must pass through that school. For you to be an approved man, that badge, you don't buy it, you don't bribe your way through it. The badge is a scar. A scar is a sign that your wound has healed. It's also a sign that there was once a wound. Let no man trouble me. For I bear. I went through it. Don't think I dropped the classes in the spirit. I went through it. God told you that you are going to become a financial prosperity giant. Get set for times of hunger. Let me tell you. A day will come the heavens will shut on purpose. Please hear me. If you like tight fire. Some of us that tight fire brigade fearful tight. Lord watch it all. I'm dropping this thing. If the heaven doesn't... There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Listen, there was a time I gave everything that I had. Nothing was happening. I've just said you, I could not afford a suit. Let me tell you. And I feared God. I used to go for ministrations. I will never forget one time I went for a ministration. Rain beat me. It was time for the ministration. No car to pick me. Right? The church is, uh, is around. It's is not too far from here. This secondary school. Somewhere there. One church that invited me. It was raining. And they were ringing my phone. They didn't. That time there was no protocol. No nothing. But I had prayed and fasted. And I got up. I said, Lord, no matter what it is everywhere was a pool of water and it was muddy i came out held my bible and i started praying in tongues let me tell you i said i'm going there i was praying Shake i said lord i passed through it with joy a day will come people will hear me 
when I got there to make matters worse, it was Steve Strings that saw me coming and he ran out with an umbrella to help me and bring me in. When I got to the church, they made me to stay outside so that they would arrange a seat for me to sit down. There was no seat. When I got there, they were acting all kinds of drama and they were laughing. And then after everything, they whispered to me that please, I have 15 minutes. I should think of how to patch the time so that I can, I can, I can be snappy about it. It's called the fullness of affliction. Three days fasting. Not, not nonsense. Fasting six to six with proper spiritual exercises to go for. It's called the fullness of affliction. Many of you have grace, but nobody is honoring you. A day will come, they will honor you. Don't run too fast. If you jump classes, life will bring you back. There were times I preached, there was no... After the preaching, come Sam. They said, uh, my brother. Ah! You said you are a young man where? They used to call me Bro Josh then. Not Apostle. Apostle Fire. Bro Josh. Where? where ah, you are a young man. Uh, may God honor you. The way you are going. You will be a bright young man. May God bless you. I just stop a bike outside. Bike! And I climb happily and I go home. No honorarium, no nothing. It was the fullness of affliction. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? It was building me so that my motivation behind the pursuit of God would not be money and honorariums. I didn't have money to buy a shirt. I used to go somewhere. There was one BLW guy. He always used to dry clean his suit and keep for me. So when there's any ministration, I'll run to him and collect. And then one of my friends, I'll go and collect his shoes. That's how I would join everything. My younger sister posted one of the pictures of one of the crusades. And I looked at myself. It was as if I entered inside. I entered inside a tabloid. I was lean to nonsense. I had fasted my life out. Lean until I became... I became like, look, don't just laugh because it's happening to you. And the devil wants to deceive you to stop the process. Pass through it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Pass through it. Let people mock you. You're a pretty lady. Nobody's even looking at you. You know that this is not the issue of demons. Demons have been dealt with. When will my change come? God says for others they can go, but you. He said, God, what did I do to you? Many of you have been asking God. God is saying, uh -uh, it's because you are different. Stay behind. The devil can tell you there is an RNG we can do for you. There's one brother that is roaming around looking for a wife. If you are interested, we can, we can come in and pretend as it is. All those, all those things. People use those strategies and they compromise. Hallelujah. They compromise. Say, I will not compromise. Say one more time, I will not compromise. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. He said, all the days of my appointed time. I remember the day I got one proper honorarium. I mean proper, you know what I mean by proper. Something sizable enough for you to smile and say, this looks like the anointing I carry." That day I went back and I was smiling and God told me to sow it. I said, come on, Lord. Abba. And I did gladly. Listen. Part of what some of you receive tonight is not an anointing to go and start a church or to prove to your fellowship that I have arrived. It's going to be a lonely road. It's already happening to some of us. Right? You graduated and you finished school and you are smiling and you drop your you know that everybody can help you but nothing has happened brothers and sisters don't let men look at you and think that it's because you are lazy and foolish there is a dealing of the spirit hallelujah come sweetheart come let me tell you come, 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 come quickly. let me tell you something about this lady this lady is a graduate of banking and finance are you seeing this She's a graduate of banking and finance and has been in a dealing with, this, with the spirit. She left Asaba and she's going to be in Zaria for the next, probably the next, maybe close to a year because there is a prophetic dealing of the spirit that is doing in her life. Are you getting me? Certified and approved by her mother. It takes crazy men to carry the anointing of the spirit against popular status quo 
praise the Lord banking and finance with even French again yet for the excellency of that which she believes is locked up in her spirit Let's, let me tell you if you want to be like everybody you will suffer like everybody if you are afraid of being different because of what you just try to be different the accusations are fierce everybody will say we are not doing it like this so don't be a stupid person wisdom is profitable to direct when God is telling you go left all prophets like the ones in the Bible would say go right it's always been right God will say you go left it's a lonely road but it's the fullness of affliction God is speaking to some of us here there are some of us seated here inside and outside you trekked from your house or from your whatever your office or from school to come here and if you don't get boss you are trekking back don't complain see it as the school there is a lecturer talking to you in the spirit pay attention are you hearing what i'm saying there's no money coming from anywhere brother if there is no money relax get a cup of water and drink and smile and know that the world will celebrate you there is nothing happening in my life right now that is surprising me i'm only grateful about it hallelujah sister when god is done with you then you will know why he trained you when you see the kind of man he brings and the responsibility that is waiting you will know why your training was different are you getting what i'm saying who is god speaking to many of us are seated here although we are smiling please play my notes listen we are smiling but there are wounded soldiers sitting looking at me there are many of you this is how you held yourself spiritually to come here is you you pack yourself and the remaining of you and came for koinonia a lady came they brought her in from kaduna gas exploded on her gas cooking gas exploded on her burnt her face burnt her limbs and i was calling this lady and she said when can we come and see you i said this morning i thought they were joking by seven o'clock the whole family they carried themselves and they came they carried the lady when i looked at that lady and she was declaring the faithfulness of god beautiful lady turned to nonsense as a result of gas gas burnt her her feet and she loves god right many of you are touching your face nothing is happening to you <laughs> hallelujah do you know when i sat down and i prayed with this lady while i was praying with her her bond hands she held my hands and as she was crying i could see these ladies you you could sense what she was saying i'm not giving up lord you are faithful when i finished praying she said i should take her she said she wants to walk by herself and she told her mom she said she wants to show the devil she wants to put the devil to shame that's what she said and this girl got up step by step we we're going and she was walking tomorrow you will see this woman raising wheelchairs on crusade grounds when she sees people with wheelchairs the school she passed through created a memory and that memory brings the anointing that's why sometimes you see me sit down during miracle services i've gone through some pain enough in my life we say we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched when was he touched during the furnace of affliction there are many preachers who are so innocent from what is happening to members. They don't know what is happening, so they don't know how to preach. They don't know how to love. They don't know how to be there. I've suffered hunger. There are times that people come to meet me and say, Apostle, as I am like this, I've not eaten. And I look and I say, I understand. No matter what it is, don't give up. They are trying to fight tears in their eyes. I say, don't give up. Don't be afraid. I told you crying is allowed. In the furnace of affliction, crying is allowed cry and wipe your tears and pass through your father looks at you and says you claim there are people here among us one of us here was disowned by his parents completely there are a number of us like that on account of our faith and our, i mean disowned for real they have been on their own there are students here who are sourcing school fees by themselves every one naira comes by faith i speak a word to you don't you think god has rejected you you are passing through what will make you a principality in your time that's how great men are made. i fasted for many days with nothing to break the fast 
but I knew God was faithful. Hallelujah. God. That's why today, if you like, bring, bring, bring a bottle of drink that is one million and give me. I'll drink it, drop it, and continue what I'm doing. Because I've passed through a fullness of affliction that gives me the appreciation to love people at every level. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It makes you to love people. I went through things in my life I would never want anybody to go through. It creates the true spirit of love. This army are men and women that for now, let me tell you, all over the earth, they are not manifesting yet, brothers and sisters. Many of them are still passing through the fullness of affliction. Some of you, it was your pain and tears that brought you to Koinonia. There is, there is an evil in your family waiting. And you are the one who is trying to emerge. And you who is trying to bring your family into victory and deliverance. The devil is, is making them walk against you. Is that true? Some of you, after this Koinonia, you are going back home. And the spirits have gone in advance to manipulate and orchestrate trouble. Some of you, as you are reaching home, is with a slap, they welcome you. They say you went to the guy's house and be keep quiet. It's not time to defend yourself. Receive the slap but realize that a principality, a reformer, is on his way to rise. Who is God speaking to? A reformer is on his way to rise. There are many of you, people offend you and they do nasty things, but God tells you, get up and go and apologize to them. And you say, God, for what? I didn't, and God says, that's not, get up, go and apologize to them. Get up and go and apologize to them. There are times God will carry, tell you to get your best gift and give your worst enemy. It's a fullness of affliction. It's a place of beauty. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have the capacity to wax an album. You are about to wax the album and God says you are on your own. You are on your own with that album. He said, instead, carry the money and go and show it to somebody and remain. Ha! I wish what I was saying were a lie, but it's true. You will pass through it. Some of you are going through it right now. You will pass through it. Brothers and sisters, the first crusade we went for, I think we were, I don't know if we were up to 50 or more than 50. But I preached my life out. We healed those we could heal and we gave Jesus praise. Praise the Lord. There is a prophetic word upon your life. That is why your life is the way it is going. Please listen to me. I'm speaking to you. There is a prophetic word. Some of you have written jam for years. Nothing has happened. Your colleagues have gone ahead of you and even graduated. Don't worry. There is a hand that is moving you. You may not see it. You may cry through the night. But I'm speaking to you. There is a hand that is moving you. There is an anointing you will soon encounter in the place of your pain. Where, where you sit down and there is nothing to do, all of a sudden you will find an anointing. There is a squeezing out, a pressing, like what my knee will call it, a breaking of the outer man and a release of the spirit. There is a breaking. You are, you are rising to a realm in the spirit. Sister, continue the prayers. Continue the Bible study. Don't worry. You may look like a fool. Continue. I spoke to a woman who told me that there was a time she was using groundnut oil. God is my groundnut oil. You know groundnut oil? To rub on her body. And she said, it will be great and it will be better for me one day. You want to be great? The fullness of affliction is your passport. This message may not be pleasant. It's a series we're taking. It's called the Imagines. We're looking at the making of reformers. The mystery of the fullness of affliction. Where men are made. It is the place you will cry your cry till there is no tears to cry again. It is the place you will call for help and heaven is silent. It is the place where your challenges keep multiplying before your face by the day. It comes to a point where as the mountains surround Jerusalem, that's how everything has surrounded you. Where you are praying for something to be better, another thing comes up. The Bible says they kept mounting themselves on Job. First, his animals and everything died. 
lightning came and scattered his building then he was told that he still one report after the other and job just sat on the ground he said naked i came and he began to speak a lot of things let me tell you something the fullness of affliction will get you to a point where you can't talk again your silence becomes your prayer and god hears it because that is the time you will be talking the loudest you sit down you can't open your mouth to say god is unfaithful but to say god is faithful becomes difficult and it's not a sign of unbelief hallelujah that's the point where everything in your life does not seem to work yet you are making spiritual progress yet you are growing spiritually you are suffering from a sickness that you are healing others of you lay hands on them and the power of god gets them free but you have prayed and fasted for months and this thing does not go i bring you a matured message to the body of christ there is a making of reformers across the entire earth these men their dealings look harsh but my brothers let me tell you something do you know how the eagle trains the eaglet to, to fly it picks it up and throws it away and just allows it if you do and it keeps moving around and then eventually it comes back picks it up takes it back and throws it away that's why the eagle does not just fly it soars when other birds are moving around the eaglets when i was an eaglet i went to a lot there are things you go through in life that kills fear somebody looks at you and holds a gun and says i will kill you all of a sudden you remember how many in my life too many things do you know why i don't fear cars jam me one huh you see all the things that have happened in my life Abba. no human being born of a woman can kill me i'm telling you this it's not pride you don't know i told you i've entered car where the armed robbers were shooting I, I, okay no they didn't shoot we we're coming from portacourt right armed robbers i was sitting on c2 luxurious boss you know c2 the one that the, the driver is down you are the one in front there are perils you go through in life that make you mature that's what releases the anointing life has squeezed you so much there's nothing to squeeze there again you are a dead man in christ you have no reputation of yourself and then when you never expect it the light will shine it will never happen when you, Joseph never saw in a vision that by the next day he would be the prime minister. Probably he now said, Oh Lord, let me be in this prison for five more years. Five years is enough for me. Not knowing that that was the last night. He would have been grateful if he was told that he would stay just five more years. But that night, he was at the entrance of another realm, leaving the furnace of affliction forever. Hallelujah. I've shared with you how the Lord instructed me to trek from that place near Chicken Republic till aviation. I was trekking like a fool on the streets of Zaria. If I meet you with that madness and I say I want to marry you, what will you go and tell your father? You say, Daddy, there is a, a madman, there is an idiot that claims God is calling him. Your father has enough, my daughter. Right? Shege barata kalabaya. Lord, for you, I will do it. I may look like a madman, but so be it. Look, it takes unusual people. The fullness of affliction makes you a human being plus something else. Right? And that's what you need. A human being plus an anointing. A human being plus a grace. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Let me stop here because of our time. The making. The making. There is a making, brothers and sisters. There are many of us who have been bereaved. There are some of us, a lot has happened to you. There are some of us, what you are seeing in the spirit and what is happening in your life are east and west. I bring you a word. It 
it is a furnace of affliction if it has an entrance it has an exit you may walk through it so slow but the day you will come out you it will be without information you will you will step into an anointing you will never recover from you will step into a level of grace you will never recover from the day jesus appeared to me i was not prepared for that visitor i just loved him i wanted him with my life and then he appeared to me i perceive in my spirit that there are some of us who are coming to the end of those seasons of affliction they have lasted years you have done ev let me tell you when that season comes to an end you don't need connection everything works for you including your enemies it's a sign that that season has ended and so god stamps it upon your life jesus died and was in the grave all of a sudden while they were discussing his death jesus the christ he got up. He was on his way to Emmaus. And two people were saying, have you heard? Ah, this weekend was a bad weekend for the disciples. So Jesus died. And the man said, really? He died, brothers and sisters, but he only died for three days. What you are passing through will not kill you. If he would have killed you, you would have died since. This is how you know it's a furnace of affliction. Because in it, you never die. You go through everything that can kill you. But when all the dust settles, you are still standing. This is a message for you to preach to some of our parents. They have done their best. Some of you right now, you are the ones feeding your families, although you are students. It's you that sends money. Mommy, take 2K. And your mother is saying, Lord, when will you change our story? Tell her, Mommy, there is a reform arising in this house. That is the reason, like the blood that was put, there is a mark that is upon this family. As, as, as we are sitting, there are mega ministries that are rising. But listen, it will not rise by claiming. Your tears is what will qualify you to climb that altar. That's what will make your altar sacred. That's what will make your anointing uncommon. It is good to receive impartations. But in the furnace of affliction, you dig your own well by yourself. You dig that well until you find the water. We are going to pray. There is nothing that you are passing through that is forever. I want you to know this. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you pass through it, you will know that God is a miracle worker. When you pass through it, you will know that God is mighty. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. This is how the reformers will emerge. The first dimension of the dealings of the spirit is the mystery that is shrouded in the furnace of affliction you will pass through pain you will pass through rejection you will pass through criticism they will misunderstand you you don't need to defend yourself you will pass through all kinds of things the bible says do not count it as though it's a strange thing when you pass through fiery trials lift your voice and begin to pray koinonia everyone pray i draw strength i draw strength from the journey ahead I draw strength for the journey ahead. Pray. I draw strength in the name of the Lord Jesus. I draw strength for the days of criticisms. I draw strength for the days of weaknesses. The days when there is no result in my life. The days when there is no result in my church. The days when there is no result in my career. I draw strength to face the carryovers that I have. I draw strength to face the mockery. I draw strength to face this pain, this sickness in my body. I've been married for five years. No child. I draw strength. Go ahead and pray. He said, and Elijah went in the strength of that bread. 40 days journey. And Elijah went in the strength of that bread. Pray. Pray. I draw strength for my family. They may be persecuted. My father has lost his job. Mother lost her job. 
but I draw strength. The storms do not come to kill me. They come to make a reformer out of me. I am part of the program of God. I am part of the program of God. I may cry for now. I may weep for now. I may not have a helper. But I lift my eyes onto the hill. From whence cometh my help. I may pass through the fire. It will prune me. It will discipline me. It will teach me obedience. But in the name of Jesus, I will not give up. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Make a vow with destiny that I will not give up until I become a reformer. I will not give up. The sword of God is waiting for those who finish to be given. That mantle, that anointing for your ministry, for your business. Pass through it. Lift your voice and pray. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. No matter what happens, I may cry, but I will not give up. I may weep. Shake it. There is an anointed man rising from this pain. Out of these ashes, out of these ashes, there is a general, a custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom. The reward for the pain is the anointing. The reward for the pain is the anointing. The reward for the pain, the reward for the scar, the reward for the crying is a new sword. He will give you a sword in the spirit. You will do great business for the kingdom. Therefore arise, pass through it. I bring you a prophetic word. Pass through it. It will not kill you. The storms will rise. The storms will rise. You will fall it, but pass through it. You will cry many times. Pass through it. You will endure. You will endure hardship. You will endure hunger. Pass through it. I won't give up. I refuse to give up. There is a reformer. There is a principality. There is an anointing coming out through my pain. There is an anointing story. I'm writing history. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. The last prayer point is we are going to declare the faithfulness of God. Some of you are crying. Don't let it embarrass you. You are going to say, Lord, through the pain, I say to the heavens, you are faithful. I've been mocked, but you are faithful. I saw the carryover, but my God, you are faithful. They called me a failure. They sacked me from the job. But Lord, you are faithful. He said he will marry me. After introduction, he dumped me. God, you are faithful. God, you are faithful. I lost my brother through the pain. You are faithful. I lost my father through the pain. You are faithful. I lost my pain. You are faithful. My integrity has brought me trouble. You are faithful. My integrity has brought me pain. You are faithful. You are faithful. My integrity has brought me a carryover. You are still faithful. My integrity ministry has relegated me to the background. You are faithful. For I will like an edifice. Though he slay me, yet will I praise him. And all the days of my time, I will wait. But I will wait. I will be misunderstood. But I will wait when all is said and done. The purposes of the kingdom will be planted through me. Hallelujah. 
we have one minute i'd like you to pair yourselves into two and speak strength into your brother you may be the whole you may be holding the hands of someone who came to this place ready to give up i'd like you to speak strength and say there is a supply of the spirit i speak to you you saw your results yesterday seven carryovers you don't know where you will start from but i speak strength from the throne they threw you away from the job and they said what you study cannot give you a living your ministry seems to have died no one is recognizing your grace but i speak strength speak strength prophesy strength don't give up i release strength upon you you can't give up at this time you have gone through too much you have gone through too much you are already getting to the end don't give up i supply spirit power i supply strength from the throne in the name of jesus hallelujah 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 now look at me very quickly i want to pray specially and i just want you to indicate by lifting your hands you don't need to come out here there are people who came tonight and all you came to do is to receive strength you have come to the end of your road please not everybody i just want you to lift your hands as i minister to you things have happened you had news in your family humanly speaking there's no strength to continue this thing has worried you you can't even pray again you have prayed every prayer you know how to pray in the name of the lord jesus receive a supply of the strength of the spirit i speak to you you are coming out of this you are coming out generals before you have passed through it they didn't die you will not die in it your redeemer still lives he may look silent but he will speak he may look silent but he's preparing a table before you you may not have money in your pocket but i want you to know that you shouldn't compromise the hand of your god is coming for you in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for families here represented who have come to the end of the road you have done all you know to do and nothing seems to be working i want to announce to you that there is prophecy at work in your life there is the making of a reformer it's part of the birthing process zion does not give birth without traveling he said as soon as zion travels there is a there is there is a a, a labor pain in the spirit and it's because of what is about to be birthed in your life pass through the pain like a woman passes through the pain it may last for hours for some women it may last for days others it may even require surgery but make sure the baby is not lost make sure you keep it because that baby represents your prophetic destiny keep that vision cry but keep the vision in the mighty name of jesus christ lift your hands and begin to thank god for his word hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord now keep standing those who are worshiping with us for the first time if this is your first time please let's not distract because i still want to prophesy a blessing to us before we go if this is your first time please find your way to the front find your way to the front if this is your first time koinonia celebrate them what a time to come god brought you to hear something that will set you on fire Keep coming.
praise the Lord. Bless you. Let's celebrate one more time. All our visitors, thank you so much for coming. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for coming. I want you to know that your steps were ordered by the Lord. Because the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia. The Lord brought you to bless you and to lift you. You will never be the same, I assure you, in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray for you and I want you to receive every part of this prayer because it will speak in your life. Stretch your hands, saints of God. Prophesy in one minute. We bless you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we bless you. We bless you. Whatever you are trusting God for, we pray that the Lord grant it unto you. May you become mighty men and women of fire. Women of prophecy. Men Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for her.